So Dean, now we've set up the calendar view. Now I'd like to go over to the task view. There are two ways to access the task view. One way is to click on tasks. And if you do this, you need to know that it defaults to the to-do list and then you're going to have to click on tasks. If you're somebody who doesn't want to do two clicks, Dean, show the other way that actually you do. What I do is actually live in the folders list. I love the folders list in Outlook because I can quickly go to the calendar, I can go to my inbox, and I can go to my task list. If I hit tasks in my folder list, then I automatically go to tasks and I don't have to suffer the two clicks to go to the to-do list. I highly recommend living in your folders list. Okay, fabulous. So now, if we're in the task section here, you want to be aware, folks, at the top of your screen that you're in the GTD views. Many of you might have been using the white paper, the GTD and Outlook white paper that we've written that recommends that you're in by category, but you're not going to use that anymore. You're going to be using the first five views that say Active Task by Actions, GTD, and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first view, Active Task by Actions. Now, some of you may also realize that you have a subject column, a notes column, a due date column, and there's that P column and S column. You want to You've move... Got a problem with that P column, I do, don't the you, P Meg? column. <laughs> I'm always saying to clients, do you know that that P column is really your project column? So if you scoot all those columns over to the left, now you're going to be able to see um, your actions list associated with your project. So it's a little tip, but... A lot of people don't even realize that that was there. It's a great tip for seeing the project you're working great. on. Great. Now, the other thing that I see people um, missing is that if you open up a new task, which a great shortcut key is Control-Shift-K, most people under think that they're going to go ahead in the subject line and they're going to add a new task, like they've got to call Fred, and they're going to go to the categories and put on the calls list that they're going to call this person. But we're not going to do that anymore with the Outlook add-in. You're actually going to be using the Action drop-down window and the Project drop-down window. So, Dean, do you want to show how to add a new project in Action? Sure. So let's add a new project. I don't know. What do you want to do, Meg? How about we build a hovercraft? <laughs> I think that would be great. I would be the envy of that my neighbor. That would be fun to do we today. Could fly around, and I'm going to build a hovercraft. So I just added a new project by going to the project list and adding a new project. The first thing I probably need to do is do some research. So I'll research building a hovercraft. That's going to involve watching lots of Johnny Quest episodes because they had the really cool ones. <laughs> and I'm probably going to need to do some stuff on the web, so I'm going to pick the next action of at the computer. So now we've created a project and added a task to it. Okay, fabulous. Now go ahead and save and close this. Now if you want to add notes to this project, you're going to go up to Project Central and you're going to click on the notes tab so I open up the project and click the notes tab and this is a place where you can add any notes that you want to let's say that you need to call Pete but you can't call Pete yet until you do that research this is the place where you're going to add that okay and then you can go ahead and save and close it so now in active task by actions this is the beautiful view because you can see your calls list and your computer list and I know that we haven't fully populated this and it won't show up until you have something in there so until you add a waiting for it's not going to show up on these lists and then you can see how it's associated with the project another great view is if you change the view to active task by projects this is just another way of seeing your actions associated with your project. So for the first project about building a hovercraft, you're going to see that the first item will always be the project in bold. That's because it allows you to access the notes section to that project, and then underneath it will be the next actions that you can do. The beauty also of this software is that when you're doing your weekly review, one of the steps is to review your project list and to ensure that there's a next action for each project. You either can go to this view or you can go to Project Central and make sure that each project has a next action. And for me, it just really speeds up the weekly review using the software. The other thing that I'd like to uh, show people is that the beauty of being able to take a project and moving it to the someday list. Let's say in the weekly review you decide for some reason that you uh, want to incubate on your someday maybe list building a hovercraft. So, Dean, you want to go sh and show how you can do this? Sure. I'll go to Project Central and right-click on Build a Hovercraft, and there's a someday item that I can click to someday the project. 
you'll notice that the project doesn't show up on the list anymore, and in fact it doesn't show up on the active task list anymore either. All the projects that have been someday will show up on the someday projects action list folder. You can see that building a hovercraft is still there. Then Dean, can you show how to take it off of the someday list and make it back into a project? You bet. I'll go to Project Central, hit Manage, and go to Someday Projects. I can see Build a Hovercraft, and in one click I can make it active again. Once I've made it active again and close this, I can see that Build a Hovercraft is active and all the actions and all their associated next actions are right back in the view where they should be, and we're ready to build the hovercraft. I'm glad we brought back Build a Hovercraft, <laughs> Meg, because that's something I really want to do. Perfect. Now, one of the other things that I just wanted to show here is that with the Outlook add-in, you get one project list. And when I'm coaching people, sometimes people like to separate their personal projects from their professional projects, and that really is okay. The way that you can do this very quick and easy is, let's say that Build a Hovercraft is a personal project and not a professional project. If you start with the letter Z before Build, it actually then will drop it to the bottom. I'm not saying that you have to put your personal projects at the, at, the, at the bottom. I mean, you could put your professional projects at the bottom. If you wanted to start all of your personal projects with a letter Z, then that will drop to the bottom and all your professional projects you don't have to do anything with. And it's just a way of being able to group your personal and your professional projects if you need to. You don't have to. David doesn't separate out his personal and professionals, but for years when I used the uh, add-in, I really did need to separate out my personal and professionals, and that's how I did it. And that's tasks. Mm -hmm.